right, guys, welcome to part two of your lecture where we were talking about story formats and we were just talking about voiceovers. I wanted to show you um, this page from the book because it's a really good example of how to script your voiceovers when you're writing them. So you can see I've got two columns here, okay? On the left, I have got video uh, that I'm playing and on the right, I've got the actual audio that's being read while the video is playing. So first, I've got a story about a uh, pickup truck crashing at a railroad crossing. The first thing I'm going to see is a two-shot OC, which means on camera, Jane and Andrea. So what this means is that Jane and Andrea are my news anchors, and they are sitting at the desk, and they are talking to the camera. So while I'm seeing the two-shot of Jane and Andrea, Jane starts talking while the camera is on her. She says, Updating some of the other stories making news across the nation, authorities in Newport News, Virginia are investigating an accident involving a Conrail train. Okay, so what's happening now? Jane is still talking. That's why it says Jane VO. But on the left-hand side, I can see the video that's going along with that. It's video of a derailed train. So while you're seeing this video of a derailed train, Jane's still talking. Jane is doing a voiceover. A pickup truck collided with this train at a railroad crossing. The force of the collision sent the engine and all five passenger cars off the tracks. Same story, but a different video shot now. Now I'm seeing video of injured people. Jane's still talking. The driver of the truck died in the accident. About 30 people on the train sustained minor injuries. So the reason all these video cues are written on the left-hand side is so that whoever's running the control room in the news uh, department while they're on the air knows what video should be on the screen while Jane is saying these words. So let's say Jane is saying the driver of the truck died in the accident. You don't want, say, video of a courtroom being played while, that's, while she's talking. You want video of injured people playing while she's talking. So Jane is done with her story. Now we're going to go to a new story where her, her co-anchor, Andrea, is going to give to us. So on the left-hand side of the page... I'm getting more directions. Wipe to video of a plane, uh, video of plane wreckage. And there's a font, there's something written on the screen. Underneath the video written on the screen is Blevitt Falls. Andrea is talking while this video is playing. She's saying, and divers in North Carolina are searching for the bodies of nine people who died when a military transport plane crashed into this lake in North Carolina. And then we get different video. Lake Lylesville, North Carolina, and more video of the wreckage. The victims were stationed at Fort Polk. They were on a training mission. So far, the cause of the crash is unknown. Now we're going to wipe to a different video with a different story. Now at this point, Jane and Andrea, their faces have not yet been on the screen. There's only been this video playing and wipes in between them. So now we're going to see a video of Clintons, Bill and Hillary Clinton shaking hands with people. While we're seeing that video of them shaking hands, Jane is saying, and a citizens group called Public Citizen is demanding the State Department release nearly 200 emails relating to the Clinton Foundation. Now the video is going to switch to workers inside the Clinton Foundation headquarters while Jane keeps reading. The group says the foundation received more than $100 million from foreign countries while the Clinton family was active in national politics. A spokesperson for the foundation has declined to comment on the allegation. Okay, look on the left, what it says, on camera tag, that means our anchors are gonna be back on camera. So, Andrea's on the camera now, and Andrea's talking. The president of Public Citizen says the materials should be public record. So what you have is three different stories, three different VOs. The first VO about the train crash is about 20 seconds. The second uh, story about the airplane wreckage was about 22 seconds. And the third story about the Clinton Foundation was about 25 seconds. When each of those stories was being read by the anchor, we did not see the anchor's faces. Instead, what we saw was the uh, different video that a reporter had gone out into the field to get. So that's how I want you to script your VOs when you're doing your assignment. Okay, on the left-hand side of the column, you're going to tell me what the video is. And again, you can use your crazy imagination and imagine you have the most compelling video ever shot by man. And then on the right-hand side, you're actually writing out the story, the words the anchor would say 
about the story, okay? So that's how you write a VO. Now, let's go a little bit further and talk about a VOSOT. A VOSOT is voiceover with sound on tape. So what is a sound bite? A sound bite, as you guys have learned, is the words of newsmakers, also called an actuality, okay? Um, the only difference between an actuality for radio and television is that in radio, you only hear the person's voice, but sometimes when you're playing a sound bite on television, you actually see video of the person talking as well, okay? So a sound bite uh, is incorporated with the voiceover. A sound bite should only be used if it has the following elements. Relevant information. So there is a news person talking, a newsmaker talking, and they're telling you something that um, we need to hear from them. So maybe a firsthand account of a uh, person who saw the accident unfold. Maybe it's um, a victim of a uh, murder suspect who's on trial right now and you're wanting to get their emotional reaction to it because you can't relay emotion as a reporter, but you can get somebody else that can. So they must have relevant information. Um, good production. You want to have good lighting and you want to have good audio. Uh, both of those things are important. Uh, a lot of times I see that uh, reporters are nervous about sticking a microphone in someone's face. Don't be. Get that microphone in there so that you can get good audio. And I don't care if the microphone's in the shot. Some people are purists and don't want to see the microphone, but I would rather see the microphone and have good audio than not see a microphone and have bad audio, okay? So uh, go ahead and get that mic in there. Um, and then also a good sound bite shouldn't be too long. It shouldn't be too short. You want it to last about eight to 14 seconds. So diff some different uh, ways that people might refer to this type of story. Um, they might say V-O-S-O-T, which is voiceover sound on tape. Uh, they might just reduce it to V-S-O-T. They may uh, call it V-O voiceover bite to stand for sound bite. Um, but all of these things are the same thing. They're adding video to sound. It's always a voiceover with a sound bite, no matter how they refer to it. Um, it's a little bit less than a package. Uh, a package has um, additional elements that we'll talk about. A package has a stand-up and different shots and a lot of times more than one sound bite. So this is kind of like a baby package. It's <laughs> the reporter talking, you have some B-roll playing, and then you have a sound bite. So you have those three things, okay? Um, a lot of times uh, a VOSOT is shot by a field videographer and read by an anchor. So they don't need to send their reporter out if it's a story that's pretty self-explanatory. They can just send a videographer out to get some shots and then the anchor will read uh, the voiceover part and write the voiceover part. Um, some different things that people need to know. They need to know when to track, they need to know track up. Track up means uh, when in this script is the sound bite going to start. Okay, and they need to know how long the sound bite is going to be too, and then also what the out cue is gonna be. The out cue, again, we talked about out cues with radio. The out cue is the last two words of the sound bite. Uh, the production room needs to know what the out cue is so they know when the sound bite's supposed to start and then the voiceover resumes. So, uh, going back to that script I showed you, You can see on the left hand side here, I've got um, VO, video of the farm, including peach trees and close ups of shriveled fruit. While that video is playing, which is about 10 seconds long, uh, the audio is usually the peaches and blueberries at this farm are ready to pick by now, but there's not enough rain and it's killing the crop. Now, what do I have? SOT, sound on tape. 10. That means it's 10 seconds long. The font tells okay, me... Okay, let's try this again and not hit the button on the iPad that stops the video. So I got the sound on tape. 10 seconds. Mark Stewart, local farmer. And over here on the right-hand side, I'm going to tell you what Mark Stewart is saying in his um, soundbite. You don't necessarily have to write out the whole quote for uh, television. 
you just have to write out the out cue, which was get them back, okay? So it's telling me the sound on tape, who it is it's talking, and also on the right-hand side what the out cue is. The out cue is get them back. And then there's other elements here. There's a stand-up and whatnot, so we'll go over that when we come back to that. But for uh, video or scripting a voiceover sound on tape, that is what uh, we would need. All right. So the split page, the split page. The split page is a standard format for a TV script. There's two columns. There's audio column on the right and a video column on the left. The video column, of course, tells us the video elements that we're going to see. But the audio column, the column on the right, is kind of actually where you write the story. It contains the copy that's going to be read by the anchors. It gives them running times, and it also gives them out cues of footage with sound. So again, like I just showed you, um, that in that script, the whole quote was written out, but usually what you'll see is just the last two words of the quote, the out cue written on the right-hand side of the page. Now, when the anchor is reading, the anchor is only going to see that one column. They're only going to see the audio column. They're only going to see that right-hand column. And the reason is we don't want to confuse them. All they need to know is the words that they have to say. They don't need to know the video that's going to be played while they're talking. That left-hand column, that video column, that's not for the anchors. That's for the production room, the control room. That's for the guy who's going to punch the button to make the video come up. He and sh or she needs to know what that video is supposed to be, but the anchor doesn't need to know that. So on the video column, left-hand side, remember, you're going to have that slug. And you guys remember what the slug is? The slug is, okay, remember what the slug is? The slug is that title of the story. So the slug, draw, drought hits farmers. Again, the date, 3.30, the time, 6 p.m., and the reporter's initials, E.G. That slug does need to be on the left-hand side. That does need to be in that video column um, just for information for the production room to know. Um, the video column contains all video and audio instructions. So not only is it telling you the video that's going to be played, but it's telling you what the out cues are and like what the last two words the reporter says are before the video comes up. Uh, it also gives running times. So how long is the footage we're going to see? Is it 10 seconds of a tra uh, train derailment or is it 5 seconds? Is it 20 seconds of a victim or is it 10 seconds? Um, and then there are abbreviations that are used due to the fact that you have some limited space. So here are some of the abbreviations you're going to see in that left-hand video column. OC. OC stands for on camera. OC tells the director that the anchor will be on camera. Uh, there might also be a chance when a reporter is OC, uh, might say OC reporter, if the reporter is doing a live shot, live report from a field. VO stands for voiceover. That lets the production room know that the anchor is reading copy while the audience sees something else. Okay. Uh, SIL stands for silent footage. It's used in combination with the VO symbol. So you might see on the left-hand side VO, which means that there's a voiceover, and then the word, the abbreviation SIL, which means while there is a voiceover playing, there's silent footage of uh, a video being played. Uh, SOT stands for sound on tape. This could be a sound bite from someone that was interviewed, or it could be a report from the field taped earlier. So the sound on tape could be a newsmaker who was interviewed, or it could be the reporter who was there at the field earlier and has since left and is not going to do a live shot from the field, but has recorded what they were going to say about the story. Um, ENG just stands for electronic news gathering. It's video, um, is on videotape or digital format. Font. Um, font is when there's names, titles, or other information superimposed over the footage. So if you're interviewing... Uh, President Trump, there might be a graphic that come up that says President Donald Trump, and it might say, you know, where he is, uh, the Rose Garden at the White House. Those words are all written on the screen. Uh, this is also called super because it's superimposed, 
or VG for video graphic. Uh, it just depends, you know, what newsroom, uh, what your newsroom prefers. Um, SL, ESS, ADDA, these are all different acronyms that basically mean there's pictures or graphics of some sort that are going to be shown next to the anchor. So it might be an over the shoulder shot, it might be a slide, um, you know, you don't know what it's going to be, but there's something, some kind of graphic that the newsroom needs to know to put up while the anchor is talking at that particular point. So when you're using a split page script, um, you're going to want to have a little bit more tape than is necessary for the story. So let's say you've got a story that's going to take you 15 seconds to read. And you're like, oh, I just need 15 seconds of tape. You might want to put like 20 seconds of tape in there just in case the anchor takes a little bit longer to read the story than, um, than you thought. What you don't want is you don't want the footage to end abruptly while the anchor is not expecting for her face or his face to be on camera. Um, it would be better for some video to be playing um, while there's silence than to have nothing, okay? Um, and then the tag is the final sentence of the story. You're going to put that in the video column. As you can see, if you go back uh, to that script, let's see if I can get this in here. And not mess everything up. See how it says on camera tag? It lets the person know when the story is ending. Okay. okay, so we have talked about now readers, we've talked about voiceovers, and we've talked about voiceovers with sound on tape. Now we're going to get to the big mamma jamma, the most complicated story you will use, uh, shoot and write as a television reporter. And that is the package. The package has many different elements. There are sound bites, usually more than one. There are stand-ups, which the reporter does. And there's B-roll. Um, so you need all those elements. And they're all usually a little bit longer. They're usually about 90 to 120 seconds long. Um, so a minute and a half to two minutes. But again, if it's a big story like the coronavirus now, or, you know, back when President Trump was getting impeached. If it's a big story, it might be five minutes long. Or it might be two shorter packages, but they're related, put together. Okay? So the package is the biggest, most complicated story you'll have to work on. Um, when you're doing a package, you want to use that strong video first to really hook the viewer in. You want to use something visually and compelling to get them to watch. Um, but before you decide what video you're going to do, you should write out your audio elements, okay? You should write out what sound bites you're going to use, what your stand-up is going to be, what you're going to say in your stand-up, what the voiceover is going to be. Just write that audio first. Write it like you would write a radio story when you're just talking. Write the audio first on the right side, and then on the left side, you can add in the video elements later while you're listening to the story. You know how long it's going to be. You can decide what video goes good with this story. Uh, TRT just means total runtime, time to tell the story. Um, so lay down your narration, which means actually record your narration, and then you add your video and natural sounds after you have decided what your narration is going to be. So a stand-up. I've been talking about you're going to need a stand-up. So what is a stand-up? This is when the reporter gets involved in the story. This is when the reporter actually appears on camera. Uh, so whenever a reporter appears on camera and speaks directly to the viewers, that's a stand-up. Um, sometimes directors want their reporters' faces on camera. They want their reporters to build a relationship with the audience, just like their anchors do. And it also lets the audience know, hey, we actually have like physically sent people and resources to cover the story. So that's how much we care about it and how important it is. There's generally three types of stand-ups. There's an open that happens at the beginning of the package. There's a bridge, it's when the stand-up happens in the middle of the package, or there's a close, which is when the stand-up happens at the end of the package. Now, it's called a stand-up because usually it's the reporter standing still and just speaking to the camera. 
Uh, but a stand-up can also involve the reporter maybe walking and talking at the same time, or the reporter's talking to the camera, but they're showing you something. Like they might be showing you, like, look at this wreckage. This is where the tornado touched down, you know. But it's, it's called a stand-up, whenever the reporter's talking on camera. Um, so an opening stand-up, again, it takes place at the start of a package. It may look like a live shot. Uh, it may be like, um, you know, the anchors are saying, and now we're going live to the scene with so-and-so, and they might be a live shot. But um, it could also be something that was pre-recorded. It still looks like a live shot, but if it was pre-recorded, you can't ever say, now we're going live to the scene, um, if it was done ahead of time. Um, one of the drawbacks of doing a stand-up in your opening is it can be a little bit clumsy and lead to poor story structure, because um, sometimes it's kind of boring to start with a stand-up. There's more interesting things that we can start the package off with, like good visual, uh, good video. Um, and also, sometimes it's really hard to write good leads in the field. So if the reporter in the field is responsible for opening the story, it can be kind of hard on them. And it also might send the message to the audience that the reporter is more important than the story. Sometimes reporters use a lot of stand-up because they want their, quote, camera time. Um, but it should never be given to a reporter at the expense of the story. If there's more compelling video than a reporter standing there, show the more compelling video. Um, However, uh, if there's a lack of video or if the story is breaking, if it is a breaking news story and you have a reporter live on the scene and you're just figuring things out and you don't have a lot of good video yet, um, you could use that opening stand-up. A bridge is when you do the stand-up in the middle of a story. Um, this can be helpful in bridging together two parts of a complicated story. Like let's say you're talking about a bill. In the first part of your story, you might be talking about what supporters of the bill are saying. And then the second part of the story, you may talk about what opponents of the bill are saying. So your bridge can explain there's two different sides to the story. Or maybe there's two locations to the story. Maybe your first location in the story was where a shooting occurred. And your second location of the story is where police apprehended the suspect. And so you have two different locations. So if you have two different sides of a story, two elements to a story, it might be good to put a bridge in the middle to bring those together. Uh, so again, two physical locations or two sets of issues in the same story or two aspects of someone's life. Let's say you're doing a feature on a basketball player. You might show their home life and then also their life on the court. Okay. Um, one of the drawbacks is it could disrupt a story if the reporter suddenly appears for no reason. So again, keep yourself out of the story if there's no reason to be there. That's the tricycle principle. Don't put yourself on camera just to get camera time. If you are going to do a bridge stand-up, there should be a reason you're suddenly appearing on camera and doing something. Maybe the reason is you're tying these two sides of the story together for your audience. And then the most common type of stand-up is the closed stand-up. This is when the stand-up comes at the end of the package, including SOC, name and station, standard out cue. Remember, that stand-up is the reporter comes on camera, wraps up the story and says, for JCTV on Gloria Inlow, okay? That's the most common type of stand-up. It's a good, easy way to transition out of the story. Uh, the reporter comes on and lets the audience know, hey, the story is over, We're going on to something next. Now, sometimes when there's a closing stand-up, if it's an uh, interesting story, the anchor might be back in the newsroom and might ask the reporter a question at the end of their package. Um, posting, posting stories online. Um, there's a couple different things you can do. You could really just literally transfer your entire package online. Um, you can take all the video you have and everything that you've written and your little two minute story and put it online, put it on YouTube, put it on Facebook. Um, if it's only two minutes long, it'll go on Facebook. Uh, so you may put your whole package online. Um, but oftentimes what reporters will do is they'll write out text and they'll put their text online and maybe a picture or some video to go along with it, but they don't put the whole package online. They just put elements online. Okay. So I want to show you, because you are going to have to write um, a package as well. So this script that I've been showing you ah, is actually a script for a package. So what you can do is, I mean, you can follow this format pretty closely. 
Okay, so you see on the audio side, I've got the whole story right now. Okay, this is the voiceover, the anchor talking. Usually the peaches and blueberries at this farm are ready to pick by now, but there's not enough rain and it's killing the crop. What comes next? Sound on tape, Mark Stewart. Mark Stewart, my farmer, now he, Mark Stewart's on camera and he's talking. The way the crops have been affected, I've had to lay off half my field crew. They're gone. I don't know when I'll get them back. And I also have how long it is, 10 seconds. Okay, now I have a stand-up. So remember, this is a bridge stand-up because it comes, it comes in the middle of the package. Uh, Goodwin is the name of the reporter that's doing the stand-up. The workers are gone because the crops may be a total loss. Right now, the only movement in the fields comes from the automated sprinklers. But even these sprinklers can't make up for lack of rain. Now look on the left-hand side. The whole time the stand-up's going on, all I'm seeing is Emily Goodwin, and her font is up, her graphic that says Emily Goodwin, Fox News 20. Now there's a voiceover that's playing. So while the voiceover is playing, I've got 10 seconds of a silent video of farm and dry ground. While you're watching this farm and dry ground video, Goodwin is talking. The drought started three months ago, sending farmers scrambling to find either water or money. Right now they can't find either. Now I'm back to sound on tape, another sound bite from Mark Stewart. I don't understand why we can't get help. That's why we pay taxes into the government to help us out. Ain't they got them any money for us? Now more video, seven seconds of video of the county extension office. My voiceover, Emily Goodwin, saying, but unlike past years, the agriculture department's really funds are already gone. So now I have another sound on tape. This is Jay Price, a county extension agent. He's going to give me a sound bite here. He's saying the federal aid program is out of money, and even if there's money at all, it won't get here for a good six months. We're looking at bankruptcy for a lot of really good people. Okay, now more video. Farm, farm equipment, rows of crops, and Emily Goodwin wraps it up. Well, the outlook for federal funds is bad. The extended weather forecast is even worse. No rain is expected for at least two more weeks. And as drought continues, farmers like Mike Stewart say the irrigation may only save a fraction of their crops. For Fox News 20, I'm Emily Goodwin. Okay? And then that ends her package. That's all she has to do. And what's going to happen next is the anchor is going to come on and say, Did you put it back on? I don't know where it is. Can you get him a new one, please? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, kid issue. <laughs> but then the anchor is going to come back on and say, Okay, thank you for that story, Emily Goodwin, and other news. And then they're going to go on to the next story. So this script is an excellent template for you to figure out how you're going to write out your story. Um, also, you know what? You can uh, use what's available to you. If you're doing a story that you got off CNN, watch the package that CNN posts and watch how they, what they're saying and don't copy down word for word what they're saying, but use that as a guideline to figure out how you would want to put these elements together. So um, this is it for the lecture. Next week on March 31st, so next Tuesday, I am going to come on with a video to tell you about um, watching a newscast and what you need to look for um, the newscast. So there's going to be a second assignment that's really short. It's just asking you to identify uh, elements of a newscast. But watching that newscast will really help you get familiar with how a television story is scripted. All the different elements that come into play. You'll be able to say, hey, that's a good stand-up. Or, hey, that's a good soundbite. Or, hey, I would use this video instead of this video and say this instead of this at this point. So um, we're going to get familiar with all of those things. Uh, but this concludes the lecture for the first week. So this is all you have to watch for the first week. Again, you have until March 31st to watch these two videos. And then I'll be back next Tuesday with the um, second part of the assignment, watching the newscast and what I want you to do with watching the newscast. I'm going to have a third video posted here that is going to go over the assignment in more detail. Your assignment is due next Thursday. So that would be April 2nd. So you have two weeks to work on this assignment or a week and a half. Um, so it's, it's a, you got a good chunk of time to work on it. And again, if you want to, you can always send me a rough draft of what you have and ask me for feedback on it and, and um, do it that way. Also, I will give you the option to rewrite this assignment just like I did for your first radio assignment. After I give you some feedback, 
and get some more points that way. All right, so thank you very much for watching. And um, if you have any comments that you want to make in uh, on YouTube, you can post them down below or you can call or email or text me and I'll try to help you out. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.